John Sheriffs was born in Aberdeen, Scotland in the year 1796. He married Isabella Gill on December 20th, 1817 and fathered six children, five of which were born in St Nicholas, Aberdeen. 1828 was a changing of times. Scottish tenant farmers had been moved from the estates, relocated to poorer holdings, often near the coast, where the main livelihood was kelping. Sheriffs was one of many who struggled to feed his family. As bad luck would have it, he was caught for poaching on a lord's estate in Aberdeen. The law was called upon and, having faced the courts, sheriffs had two choices. To be hanged or transported to Botany Bay. He chose deportation. By good fortune, he escaped from the authorities. His dear friend, William Baxter, sheltered sheriffs in his attic until the search for him had died down. Hearing of a vessel in port from Halifax, Canada, Mr. Baxter made arrangements with the captain of the ship to convey young sheriffs to Nova Scotia. Dressed in Mrs. Baxter's clothes, Mr. Baxter conducted the young man down to the vessel and put him in the care of the captain. During the winter of 1828, the sheriff's family remained in Halifax, where he taught school. He and his family, wife Isabella, children Isabella Byrne, Helen Anne, Margaret Gill, Anne Gill and John Gill, in 1829 moved to Harmony, Queen's County, where they lived on a farm with Simon and Mary Fraser. It was there that their sixth child, Georgina Mack, was born. John Sheriffs later purchased a farm from James Hendry in Whiteburn, about five miles from the Caledonia Harmony line. In 1850, Sheriffs moved to Liverpool and left his son, John Gill Sheriffs, to run the family farm in Caledonia. John Sheriffs, in 1855, built the home on Church Street. In that same year, he rented a small office from Mrs. Susan McLean and John W. Scott at the corner of Main Street and Church Lane to do bookkeeping and accounting. From 1855 to 1860, John Sheriffs was in a partnership with his son-in-law, Arad Beals, where they jointly operated a butcher shop. During that time, Sheriffs was employed as a magistrate. It was reported that on April the 7th, 1859, six persons were brought before Justice John Sheriffs. The charge was rum selling. The three culprits promised the court that they would give up their business venture and were let off with fines. One with a fine of five pounds and another was fined 20 pounds. The third was acquitted. On January the 26th, 1860, the Liverpool newspaper reported, Alan Parsons falls off McLaren's wharf and is drowned. Also on that day, the office of John Sheriffs was burglarised and all his books and papers were thrown into the dock. Another transcript from the Liverpool newspaper reads, 18th of October, 1860. John Sheriffs has moved his office to Main Street, second floor of Mr Golding's, where, in addition to his office, he will keep a small but selected assortment of flour, cornmeal and groceries, which he will sell for cash only. Sheriffs had his hand in many things, never missing out on an investment opportunity, even mining. October the 10th, 1861, Owens Gold Mining Company formed in Liverpool with £4,000, John Sheriffs as Vice President. On April the 27th, 1866, tragedy struck the Sheriffs family. The Liverpool newspaper article read as follows. We regret to learn that tiding was received in this town yesterday of the melancholy death of John Sheriffs, who drowned in a logging accident. He was the only son 
of Esquire John Sheriffs of this town. Young Sheriffs was buried at the Lakeview Cemetery. Next to him are the graves of John Sheriffs Esquire, who died in 1870, Alexander Sheriffs and wife Mary, who died in 1911 and 1916, respectively. So there they all lie together, with the first grave beginning at the tall aspen tree, then continuing in a long line. John Sheriffs willed this home to his granddaughter, Margaret Beals. Following that, Sheriff's house was transferred to many hands. Alfred Wright purchased the property in 1914. From 1917 to 1925, Anthony de Silva took ownership. In 1925, for £1,000, Ladonia of Wynacht purchased the home. Then, on August the 8th, 1926, Seaman Wynacht died at sea when two ships, the Sylvia Mosher and the Sadie A. Nicol, ran aground and sank during a gale off the shores of Sable Island, Nova Scotia. Transfer of title went to daughter Mary Ann in 1940. After 51 years, the Vinacks sold the family home. Following that, there was Michael J. Brown, Albert and Beryl E. Long, Gordon and Deborah Morrow, Kenneth Spangle, Michael Loveridge, Brady's Building Supplies, and now John Winters and Linda Wasselsu. The town of Liverpool is much changed since its early years, when it was the port of the privateers, and the streets were filled with legalised pirates who held letters of mark from the King of England. Telegraph service from Halifax to Liverpool opened in 1851. And in 1893, Western Shore Stage Route began service, carrying Her Majesty's Daily Mail between Halifax and Yarmouth, while en route stopping in Liverpool. Train travel began from Liverpool to Halifax in 1904. In 1942, the steamship Saxe Gautier made a stop in Liverpool while travelling from Halifax to Yarmouth. In that same year, passenger and commercial vehicles were required by law to be registered. Liverpool, Nova Scotia made their headlines when, in February 1942, the people of the town prepared an emergency hospital facility inside the high school's basement. The British steamer Empire Sun was torpedoed by a German U-boat. In 1947, Queen's County received a budget of £1,500 for roads and bridges. Railway passenger service along the South Shore from Halifax to Liverpool had been terminated in October 1970, and the following year the Royal Mail made its final delivery. In 1850, when John Sheriffs came to Liverpool, it was one of Canada's busiest seaports. The wooden shipbuilding industry has long since disappeared, and the Bowater paper mill, founded in 1929 and once the main employer of the town, has closed its doors. Now the sun-dappled streets are quiet, apart from the sound of children's laughter and the rustle of leaves as a sea breeze sweeps along the Atlantic shores, which blends with a trill of birdsong. This gem of a place is tucked away on Nova Scotia's south shore. It's a serene place where people come to visit, to take in a pint or a seafood dinner, but most of all, it's where they can escape the hustle and bustle of the modern world. And it's a place where retirees come to live. If only John Sheriff's Esquire could see it now. <laughs>